Hey everybody, I just want to say thank you for watching the Rift City videos on Rob's channel. Today, as I sit here with this Malcolm Young limited edition Gretsch guitar, uh, we thought we would take this guitar and compare it to an FSR, as we call it, special, uh, that we also have. We're going to pit a $10,000 guitar against a $429 guitar, and Rob and Dave are going to run through their paces. It's a great video, and I'm sure you're going to love it. And once again, thanks for watching. Salutations America, I am Rob Chapman. And I'm Dave Hollingworth. <laughs> Dave, what are we doing today? I like the way that your impersonation of me is just a louder version of you. Yeah. <laughs> today we have the illustrious brand Gretsch here at home, Rift City Guitar in Minnesota. New Hope today. And we've got two beautiful Gretsch guitars, both equally worth our praise and admiration. Although they are on completely different keels, with regards cost and price, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. Dave has an amazing guitar, which is the more affordable of the two, and I have a slightly more expensive <laughs> Gretsch. Just a bit. But they're both natural finished guitars. Now, this one has been banged up and dinged. Um, it's not a second hand. It's actually a Malcolm Young signature. So every single tiny flaw, imperfection, that's been lovingly added to this is intentional, Dave. Did you know that? I, I assumed and hoped so, given its price tag. Yes. And there are no imperfections or flaws on this guitar, which is the more affordable version. It's just perfect in every single way. It is. Or is it? Let's find out when we tone test the two Gretches. <laughs> This isn't Progland, Dave. <laughs> Clean corner, David Hollingworth weighing in at hardly anything. <laughs> running through, what are you running through? What's your I'm, rig? I am running through this um, Sun 200S, uh, which is like an old school amp. And I, I saw it here, it was a, a, a used stock that got bought in and uh, I immediately wanted to plug it in. I'd like to did. recreate the sound that Dave made when he first saw the Sun amplifier. It was something like this. Oh. <laughs> and what's on the floor, bro? On the floor, I am using a specular reverb pedal, uh, mm. which sounds wicked, mm. and a Sir Riot drive pedal, although uh, right now I'm not going to be using that. It was just in case I needed a bit of drive. I think I'm going to stay clean for the most part. And I've got a polytune down there as well to make sure that this affordable guitar stays in tune. Yes, the Sir Riot took me by surprise, to be honest. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, really, really good. Really nice. I'm using the stunning Victory Amplification Rob Chapman Signature Silverback. Uh, and a Victory 2x12 cab. Dave obviously is plugged into this glorious and very bright orange PPC 212 2x12 cabinet. Indeed. Lending him some extra low end. Not that he really needs it with this ridiculous guitar. So I have the Gretsch Electromatic Pro Jet, uh, which is in a nat natural finish, uh, which is an exclusive finish, exclusive to Rift City guitar only. Ooh, it's yes. special. You can only get it here. You can only That's get it here. Very and it, interesting. And I think it looks awesome. It does. I really like it. Especially considering it's a mere $429. It's 
It's not fishwood. It is not a fishwood base. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a base. The problem it's is, in the UK, we would say this is made from basewood, and in the States, they say it's made from basswood. basswood. But either it way, just this feels... is a basswood, <laughs> or basewood, um, chambered uh, body with a maple neck, mm. and it's glorious. I'm assuming this is rosewood. That fretboard is definitely rosewood. It's definitely rosewood. Maybe one of the last runs of guitars that's made of rosewood. It could possibly be. Mm which is a really good reason to rush out and get this guitar. And what are those pickups, bro? So these pickups are Blacktop Filtertron pickups. Yes. And because it has Tron in the name, you know they're going to be something. And Anchored Adjustomatic Bridge. Anchored Adjustomatic Bridge. Are you enjoying all these words? <laughs> it's like, like Gretsch has its own language. For this is like, I feel like I should have warmed up my mouth to be able to pronounce the spec of this guitar. Now, we are actually about to warm up Dave's mouth, believe it or not. We have the wonderful Les on the way to Dunkin' Donuts uh, <sighs> to get Dave a coffee so which that his is, mouth which is, is warm. essentially sugar. Yes. It does need to be warm because it's minus six here in it's New Hope. Right very, now. very cold. Yes. The controls on this awesome guitar are a master volume, and then we have a volume dedicated for the bridge pickup, a volume dedicated for the neck pickup, and then an overall tone control. Now that's kind of unique to Gretsch. It's a cool thing. And actually, I'm in the dirty camp in many ways. And I'm going to be showing you how I set up a Gretsch using the volumes to give you kind of a clean, kind of a crunch, and then kind of a lead boost, all contained within its tiny wooden frame. So on this awesome rosewood fingerboard are 22 medium jumbo frets. I do Is like the way it's medium and then medium jumbo. jumbo. It's two things that are completely different. It is. I don't, I mean, they, they're frets. I also have 22 frets, but these 22 frets are just better than your 22 frets, Dave, because they're more expensive and they're smacked into an ebony fingerboard. Now, the one thing that I noticed when I picked up this guitar is it also has a zero fret. Zero frets aren't that common, but they're a really great engineering solution for a guitar that just feels incredible. If you've never seen a zero fret before, I'll give you a close up that you're going to see right now of my beautiful zero fret. Mm. TV Jones classic pickup. There would have been others, but I guess Malcolm just went, I don't need those, mate. Take them out, just throw, throw them away. But this, this opens up a whole load of possibilities it's, where, well, it you, does. where you could also take influence from someone like Phil, Phil X. Yes, and you put putting, toys in there. You could put action figures in there. You could put toys in it's there. Just an, it's just, well, there's it. holes of opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Let's face it, if you, you're only going to buy this if you are a massive Malcolm Young fan. Um, That's true. And if you do that, you're probably not going to put toys in the hole. Probably not. That's probably not going to happen. But, you know, you have the option. It's there. Yes. Many people will frown upon a guitar costing 10K. I would be one of those people normally. And I'm not going to say that I'm in the camp of the kind of guy that would spend 10K on a guitar. But I'm just going to give you the reason for why it's worth that much money. And when I say worth, that's a flexible term. What I'm talking about is that to, they made a guitar and then they had to turn it into an exact replica. Yeah. It's more like a museum piece that you can rock on. Because every single tiny ding and scratch and burn mark, and I don't know what this is that he did or what that is, uh, you know, but every single tiny nuance, there's even like a weird impression here, is, is authentic to what Malcolm would have done. And what ends up happening is that it feels like you've played it for years. It feels like you've owned it for centuries. And it has a really unique tone. I suppose you have to consider that you have to have to start off with, you've got to have, you know, great guitar building yes. to build the guitar from, from the off. And then you've got to have a really skilled luthier that, that can actually do all of that replication yes. so precisely and, and potentially mess it up and then have to build a whole new guitar. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a possibility. It's absolutely and, a possibility. And, and so I guess all of that time uh, comes at a price to, to a, such a highly skilled luthier. And that's got to be something to do with why it's costing so much. Mm-hmm. 
It comes with a space control bridge and it's mounted on an ebony board. I don't know whether this would have been original to the guitar that he then obviously butchered and did stuff to, but it's really good and it has this really interesting and unique tone. You can see here these little, they look like buttons or knobs, they're nothing. This is purely where he's removed things and then just like covered it up in a nice way. <laughs> and I discovered a few interesting things with this guitar. The first thing is you've got loads of loads here you can do with fairy noises. But more importantly, it's got a master volume, a regular volume and a tone. But why would you want a master volume and a regular volume when you've only got one pickup? Well, I'm assuming it must be the placement of where it is before and after the tone part. I think it's that, but also I think it's doing something to the tone of the guitar. So I also discovered a secret source thing. And I don't know how this works or why this works. I will never know the answer to this question. But if you turn both of the volumes off, but bring the tone all the way up, this happens. If I turn the tone off, it's gone. It's acting like a peso yeah, inside the body. Yeah, there's kind of like a bit of bleed going on. It's something. something going on. I don't know what it is. There are all sorts of weird, bizarre and interesting gremlins. So in terms of a finish, it's finished by skin, bones, blood, sweat and tears. Uh, there's something about this guitar that I really, really like. I feel honoured to be playing it. Riff is one of the only stores that has this guitar left in stock. They, they made, how many did they make? 50. 50? How many are left? Uh, I don't know for sure, but I think three or four. So I don't know if you heard that, but they, they made 50 originally and there were like three or four left going around. So this is kind of a rare guitar. Let's take a listen to how this sounds and then compare it to Dave's more affordable project. I'm just going to turn the reverb off so you can hear the naked filth. <laughs> Cue naked filth. Let's take a listen to the Malcolm Young through the sun. It's really cool that it's got the 60s uh, tailpiece on it, yeah. but it's not functional. It's just there. <laughs> yeah. it's, just it's, just there. A, it's just a thing. It's just a thing that's added <clears throat> to the guitar, but you, you just wouldn't use it because it's just not operating. Mm. Um, that sounds great clean. It does. I wonder how it's much really of that nice. is the sun. The sun, the sun is, is okay, so <laughs> we can't do it because it's just too loud. 
Um, this thing is an incredibly heavy and gainy amp, but you, it's just all the power valves. So <laughs> it's all power. Yeah. So you really have to like, if you just crank the volume, it gets really filthy. Yeah. Really, really filthy. In fact, we did crank the volume all the way up, and I was there to film it, or someone was there to film it. Yeah. I was using a Schecter, wasn't I? Was it full volume? Uh, not quite. Right. But, it was close to full volume. Close to, close to full volume. Yeah. yeah. But then obviously, you know, you turn the master down, and you get this awesome, super clean, punchy kind of sound. And uh, it's, it's a great amp. Never turn the master down. Um, what about some strummy chord things? It's got cut, it's got bite. It does. But what does the project have on the filth channel? I mentioned earlier that I would teach you how I set up a Gretsch with this kind of configuration. This is what I do. I use the neck for kind of a clean. So bring in all the master. Just let it purr in, and then I bring all of the... All of the bridge in, and then I back off the master so that it just comes in. So now what I've got is I've got... Or... Then... Three different kinds of sound from one kind of machine. Indeed. It's insane. Dave, how does this sound to the sun? Put the jack on the floor. You put the jack on the Although you are in the clean corner, I am interested to know what that short riot sounds like through that guitar, because we've only tried it through this one. That is true. Step on it, bro. <laughs> That's insane. That's a big boost in volume too. Yeah. Because the sun's not got an effects loop. It's everything's going into mostly power section rather than preamp section. So it's just um, hammering us in the ear passages. Now, that is a Rift City guitar exclusive finish. But a little bird told me, he's not that little really, but a Joe Uncle Riff told me that they might have something else in the works. Hey, thanks Rob. I appreciate the opportunity to tell everybody about this. Very, very exciting news. So we've done three different special uh, pro jets in different colors. We have a surf green, we have a tangerine sparkle, and the natural, which is the newest one uh, that we've gotten in. Gretsch has actually approached us, or we're working together with Gretsch, to design the very first pro jet with a flame top. And I'm here to ask your help. I'd love to know what you think about what color we should make the next limited Gretsch guitar with a flame top. So if you want to put your comments down below, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Which do you prefer? If budget didn't exist, if it wasn't a thing, do you like massively relict looking worked on workhorses? 
or do you prefer a clean, smooth machine? Um, I guess the question is, do you think this is worth the money? Do you think it's cool that companies like Gretsch will completely recreate and produce a piece of history? Uh, or do you think it's not cool? I think it's really cool. Here's your cup. Oh, thank you very much. You're awesome. I think this has been a really cool comparison. Yeah. I've enjoyed it. I've actually, I really like both guitars and I, I'm blown away actually by this one a little bit. Yeah. I really like it. I, I mean, there's, I'm really, really interested to see the comment section on this. Whether you like it or not, it's a great guitar. It Malcolm is. Young should be proud that he did all this damage to something and it survived. And I suppose that's a tribute to Gretsch. I'm Rob Chappers. Dave. Take it easy.